Tonight we are talking about spiritual warfare. And does anyone kind of, have you guys been going through some spiritual warfare? Does anyone even know what I'm like even talking about a little bit? A little bit? If I'm being honest, like just being here as a pastor, it's, it's something that I've been feeling this week. It's something that you can't physically see, you can't physically sense, but you can feel it in a way. It's just weird. It's like you just feel it. Sometimes, have you guys ever played sports or maybe you're just having like a good day. You just feel like something is influencing you in the right way. Like you get in the locker room that day and you're like, man, this is going to be a good game. I don't know what it is. I can't see it. I can't sense it. I just, there's something that is influencing me to believe that this is going to be a good game. I believe that there are spiritual forces outside of our physical realm that influence us every single day. And I've been reading, I read this book called, what was it called again? His name was Dinesh, I forget how to say his name, Dinesh D'Souza was his name. He, he's a smart guy, he's a doctor. Was that right? Was that his, you read the book? It's, it's called Evidence for Life After Death. And saying that there's something more than just this world that we live in, this temporary world. And he was talking about how near-death experiences are evidence that there's something more than just this life. And so there's thousands upon thousands of near-death experiences that happen all the time. And a near-death experience is when someone goes flatlined, right? Their heart is just flatlined, they're done, they're on the operating bed, and they're done. They're flatlined. And so during these near-death experiences, people have started re like recording what these people, like, because they would come back to life. It's called near-death, because they weren't completely dead, they weren't done. But in a moment, they were flatlined, and in that moment, these people start saying they've experienced these things where they were out, out of their body. And so they, they're on the operating bed and their heart flatlines and they go out of their body and they start seeing stuff. One person recorded, they said that they saw a red shoe, like they were going up off the operating bed, they were out of the hospital and they said there's a red shoe on the roof. They said they saw a red shoe and they felt like they were out of their body for a couple hours and they were just like floating ahead of the, above the hospital. And so they went to like put this to the test. They actually had someone go look on the roof and there was a red shoe on the roof. Like how do you explain that? Like and, and this isn't just evidence for God. This isn't evidence for Christianity. It's just evidence that there's, there's got to be something more than just this physical realm. Another person that had the same experience. They went out, out of the hospital and they're hovering and they saw a car accident. And they even knew the exact time and everything that had happened. And then the cops recorded and this, it, the, the whole story lined up. And I'm like how do you explain that stuff? There is something outside of our body, there's something more than this physical realm, young people, I believe it. And so this guy says there's thousands of these near-death experiences that people record things and they see things and they can like start saying like the doctor was doing this and they were working on me and they were touching, my, they were in my heart and like it's crazy, it's crazy. So there's something more outside of this physical realm. Another example, and honestly you guys, I don't wanna share this story but I just feel like it proves a point. But, and it's just, it's that month, it's like Halloween and it's fall, but I, I honestly get like goosebumps and chills even like wa wanting to say this story, but it, cause it was so real to me. And like, this is one of the, I don't know, I just like get really scared talking about it. But like, so anyone, I, I you know we talk about the paranormal movies, that's part of my testimony. Well, this is kind of about my story of like giving my life to Christ cause I was so freaked out about this movie. And I've never like shared this because I hate reliving it cause I feel like, this girl is gonna like pop up again or something, but um, it was freaky, you guys. And so, I don't know if you guys, as, who saw the movie Insidious or maybe like The Exorcism of Emily Rose? And so I was in ninth grade, I was in ninth grade, you guys, and I watched The Exorcism of Emily Rose and it was messed up. I don't know if, you guys shouldn't watch that stuff. Ooh. And so, that night I'm like, kind of like trying to play it off, like I'm cool, like it didn't scare me, I like watch it with my buddies, I'm like all tough, like no, that doesn't have any effect on me. And at the time I'm not a Christian, I don't really, I kind of believed in the spiritual realm, you know, we all get a little scared about stuff. But at the time I'm like, nah, whatever, it doesn't mean anything. And I go to sleep and I kind of say like my one prayer for the year, because I'm just like really scared. I'm like, Jesus, let me have a good night. I know I watch a scary movie, forgive me for watching that, God. And Ah, oh, just let it just be a great dream tonight about butterflies and rainbows and maybe my future wife, Kim. And, and so I'm, 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 I'm going to bed, everything's good, and then all of a sudden I hear this pan drop in the kitchen. I, I'm not kidding you guys. I hear this pan drop in the kitchen. I, I walk out of my room. My, I'm like checking downstairs. Looks like my mom's still sleeping. My sister's in her room. They're still sleeping. I didn't really want to wake them up. I try not to make a big deal of this. And like, so I go and I just put this pan into the, the cupboard. I put it back and all of a sudden I hear a, 
like, I'm not outside. Like, I hear, like, this screech, and it was outside my, my back window, okay? And so I'm going to look out my back window, and all of a sudden, I see this girl with a hood on and, like, a pale face staring right at me. I'm not, you guys, I don't want to, I'm, like, freaking out, but I believe in Jesus now. It's going to be okay. I'm like, okay, I'm seeing something. I literally, you guys, I literally, okay, I, I like get down, I'm like, I go down, I'm like taking a deep breath, I duck down because I'm like freaking out, I see her and I'm like, I'm like this. And there's like floodlights, like my light that flashes outside, you know? And so I'm like, she's not there, she's not there, I'm just, Jesus, I don't really believe in you, but I'm praying right now because I'm freaking out. All right, she's not there, she's not there, I'm seeing stuff. So then all of a sudden, I hit the floodlight on, I look out, and she's still there staring at me like this. And then she starts, like, is, is somebody messing with, hey, hey, turn on, the li- turn on the lights right now. Turn on, you guys, I'm not kidding. Turn on the lights right now. Oh, jeez, whoa. Who is that? Who, I don't even know. There's someone, you guys, don't go around backstage tonight. She's here. You guys, I made up that whole story. Come on, I got to get a little Halloween sque- scare with you guys. Did I get anybody a little bit? I got Jack a little bit. Oh, man, that was awesome. Thank you. Give it up for Kenzie. I don't know who that was, though. Whoever that, I don't know who that was. They're running around the building right now. Wow, you guys are good. I, that was fun. That's a little Halloween scare for you guys. All right, gather it back in. What, what, did I, what am I doing? Why did I just do that? Uh, I'll give you guys a little bit. I need a little breather too. All right, you guys ready? You guys ready? So, basically, there's two errors when we look at the spiritual realm. You have the skeptical, right? There's two spectrums. You have the skeptical person, like, I can't see it. It's not easily explained. I don't believe in it at all. I don't believe there's spirits, demons, angels. I don't believe it. You have that spectrum. And then you have the spectrum that I was just talking about, the superstitious. You, like, think every time you turn on a light, you're, there's going to be a demon right behind you. All that kind of stuff. You get so fixated on the spiritual realm that you start freaking yourself out. And that's what I did. And I, you guys, I just want to be honest. The movies that you see are not biblical. You never see anyone, like, turning their head. You never read about that, none of that stuff. That's what I found out. I was so scared about something that was not actually biblical. And so tonight, you have to understand that I don't want you guys to get so fixated on this realm that is unseen. Don't get so fixated on it. But the Bible says that you need to be aware of it. And you need to be knowledgeable about it, and you need to know how to fight it, okay? C.S. Lewis wrote this in his screw tape letters. This is a book that he wrote. I don't know if you know C.S. Lewis. He once was an atheist, then became Christian. You guys, I'm sweating right now. I almost felt like that was real. Man. All right, I'm freaking out. Okay. C.S. Lewis wrote this. He said, there are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall into about the devils. One is disbelief in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and an unhealthy interest in them. And so that's my prayer for you guys tonight. Will you guys pray for me as we pray about this message? Dear Jesus, I pray that these students lean in like never before um, and that they would have the accurate amount of awareness of this spiritual realm that you talk about in your Bible, God. God, you give us the Bible not for us to pick and choose things that we want to believe in. Lord, because if we do that, we're just following ourselves, God. God, but you give us the Bible to take it as a whole thing, to take it as truth, and either take it as a whole or leave it for nothing. So, Lord, we take your whole Bible tonight, and this is what your Bible preaches on, God. God, would we accept it? Would we believe in it? Would we understand it in a proper way tonight? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, point number one tonight. There is a spiritual heavenly realm outside of this world. There is. Ephesians 6 Chapter, or sorry, yeah, Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 12 says it like this. It says, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. You guys, if you're getting mad at flesh, like people that, physical people, you're battling the wrong enemy. That's what the Bible tells us. 
You're battling the wrong enemy if you're just so fixated on a person and you hate that person, you hate that people group. No, evil starts with the spiritual realm. There was a fall before the fall of humanity. I'm gonna explain it some more, but I just wanna talk quickly about angels. Anyone ever wonder more about angels? Like, what are angels? Who are they? What do they do? What is the Bible saying? Well, here's my, it's kind of a lot, but here's my quick 11 things about angels we read about in the Bible. Are you guys listening? You guys ready? Come on, this is my right side, my peanut gallery a little bit tonight. Are you guys listening? Can I get a clap or something over here? Thank you. I love you guys. You're awesome. All right. Right now, but these guys are up one point over here because these guys are, I feel like you guys are locked in. One to zero, left, first, right. Okay, 11 things about angels. First thing, angels are personal spiritual beings who have intelligence, emotions, and will is what the Bible says. Point number two, it might just help to take a picture. This will be good for you guys to go back and study. Point number two, angels are spirit beings without true physical bodies. So they, they, they are able to take physical form at, in some times in the Bible, but they don't have a physical bo body permanently like we do. Point number three, because they are created beings, their knowledge is limited. So they're not like God. They don't know everything. They're not omnipresent. They can't be everywhere at once. I remember once one person was telling me in his testimony uh, how he gave his life to Christ that the devil was in his bedroom, and he's like, he had red horns and everything, and I was like, really, man? You're telling me out of all the people that the devil could be messing with right now, he's in your room. Like, he's not God. The devil is not God. He can't be everywhere at once all the time. The devil can't do that. He doesn't have that power. They're limited in their powers. They, they don't compare to God. Five, angels have more knowledge than humans because they were created before and in, in an order that is higher than humans. So angels have a little bit more higher power than us. They've been around longer. They were created before us. Angels know and study the Bible more than humans. And there's a couple passages that I can give you for references if you want to ask me later. Um, but I believe it's in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. Next slide, please. Number seven, angels gain, this is a lot right here, guys. You better be listening. Angels gain knowledge through long ob observation of human activities and can predict the way we will act in certain circumstances. So angels and demons have been around for a long, long time, and they know how em humans will respond in every si single situation. And so that's how they influence us. Eight, though they have wills, angels, like all creatures, are subject to the will of God. So they always are subject and below God. Nine, angels are in an entirely different order of being than humans. Human beings do not become angels after they die. So that's a big myth. I think some of us might think that we become an angel. You do not become an angel after you die. Angels will never become and never were human beings and are not created in God's image like us. So there's this unique thing about humans. We were created in God's likeness. We can go into more detail about that another time, but angels and humans are completely different creations. 10, they praise God. So these are the good angels. Good angels, they praise God, they worship God, they rejoice in what God does, they serve God, they appear before God, they are instruments of God's judgment, they bring answers to prayer, they aid in winning people to Christ, they assist the believer, they encourage in times of danger, they care for the righteous at the time of death. You guys, angels are on our side, the good ones, all right? This is what we see that they do in the Bible. And then point number 11, nowhere in the Bible does it tell you to pray to angels. You pray to God, so have the angels fight on your behalf. Again, that's in Hebrews chapter 14. Do not pray to angels. That is not biblical. Don't do it. Just pray to God. He's way more powerful than the angels. So that's my quick little snippet on what angels are. I hope that was helpful. Give me a uh-huh if that was good. Uh-huh. All right. So I think the next question is, though, now that we see there's angels, now that we see there's demons, demons basically do the complete opposite thing of those good angels. Now that we know that there's angels and demons, I think you guys probably have some questions coming up. I think the question becomes, why is there this battle between angels and demons? How did it start, and what are they fighting about? Come on, have you guys ever had some of those questions maybe? Like, why are the angels and demons fighting? Why are they here? What are they doing? What is it about? And I want to start out with this question to someone specifically right here. I'm going to ask JJ. JJ, can you have, this is, maybe this is a trick question. Can you have evil without good? Like, if there's no good in the world, you could have evil. Just evil. No? Are you sure? All right. Okay, he's right. He's right. He's right. That's good. That's good. So basically what I'm saying is a lot of people think good and evil are this opposite thing. Like, they're completely equally opposite. It's not true. God created everything good. And so you can have good without evil. 
But you cannot have evil without good, because evil is a corruption of good. So you have to have a standard, a good standard, before you can have evil, and say this is wrong. So you have to have something that's right before you can say it's wrong. Same thing with the truth and the lie, right? Lawson, can you have a lie without truth? No? Can you have a lie without truth? Do you need to have a truth in order to have a lie? You can have a lie without truth? <laughs> no, but the point is like you can't lie about something unless there's a standard of truth. So you can have truth alone and good alone. So that's proof that everything in this world, that everything that God created was good. And anything that is not of God is a corruption of the good standard. So God creates truth, and then anything that isn't truth, it's a lie. It's opposite of God. So we have to understand that everything was created good. Everyone say good. good. Look to your neighbor and say, you look good. good. Whoa, all right, okay, helping you guys out. And so how did, we, how did we get from good to evil, I think is our question. And so I'm going to take you guys on a little trip a little bit back to Jesus and his angels. And so in the beginning, God created Satan good. His name was Lucifer. Everyone say Lucifer. You guys tracking. I am hope you're tracking. This is, a good, this is a good story. This is actually in your Bible. It's good stuff. And so this is in the book of Ezekiel and Isaiah. It talks about the fall of Lucifer and him becoming Satan. And so Satan was created as Lucifer. He was an angel of light. Lucifer was beautiful. He was the most powerful, one of the most powerful angels. They say he was like God's right-hand man. And he knew a lot about God. He knew a lot about creation. He knew a lot about all the other angels. He had a lot of power. And Lucifer was good, but then all of a sudden, like, God gives every creation, like, like us as humans, and he gives the angels choice. He wants them to have true love, and you can't have true love if you don't have choice. And so he says, he gives Lucifer choice, and Lucifer eventually starts to become prideful, and he wants to become like God. He wants to have God's rule. He wants to have God's throne. He says, I could do a better job than this guy. I can do a better job than this God, and, and so God kind of lets him start feeling like this, thinking like this. The Lucifer starts going and putting lies into other angels, and eventually God says, that's enough. All right, you can choose today, basically, you can either choose my ways or you can choose Lucifer's ways, but he's now going to become Satan and he's going to be cast out of heaven. And so that's what God did. There was a war in heaven and every angel, their whole fate of eternity was dictated in that moment. If you're going with Lucifer, you're done. You're gone. If you're going with Jesus, you're staying here in heaven. You're going to be with Jesus. Jack, do you have a question? Oh, that's a good question. Then you're going to give that to your small group leader. Where's Jason? You ready for that one, baby? Come on, man. That's going to be a good one. All right. Keep that question. Keep those questions. Layton, keep the question for your small group leader. Evan, he'll be excited to answer it. All right. You guys, whenever we dive into the Bible, there's always going to be more questions. That's why we do small groups. I love it. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Okay. So basically, people had the ability to choose not God. Just like in the garden, Adam and Eve had the ability to, in a perfect area, had the ability to choose not God. And so Lucifer wanted to become like God, and he became prideful, and eventually took all one-third of the angels, and they became demons, and they were casted out of heaven. And from that point, there is this battle now, because the demons want to sabotage God's new creation, human beings. Come on, you and I, we are the human being creation of God, made in his likeness. And so it started right in the garden, the, de that the devil, the serpent, he took a physical form as a serpent. He's usually a spirit, but he took physical form in that moment. And he tried to get Adam and Eve to be like God. So they can now see like God and have the knowledge of good and evil. Before they only knew good. Isn't this crazy? I know you guys, their minds are spinning, I bet, right now. And so basically then the fall of humanity. And now there's this battle between the angels and demons. For what do you, what do you guys think they're fighting about? They're fighting about who's going to stay and live with God forever. And who's going to fall with Lucifer and the demons that are damned to hell forever. Right? That's a fight for our souls. That's what we read in the Bible. I'm just giving you what I read in the Bible. And so there's a war for our souls. And the angels are here to influence us towards God. And the more you choose God, the more you're going to be influenced by the angels in the spiritual realm. But the more you choose not God, the more you're going to be influenced by the demons and the devil and their ways as well. And so there's this battle that is fighting for our souls. And we have to decide which side we're going to go on. We have to decide. And so we see point number two tonight is our biggest problem in life is a spiritual problem. 
And I know what you're saying, like, Pastor Josh, come on, not every problem is a spiritual problem. Like, I'm telling you guys, if you come to us with mental health, and you say you're struggling mentally with depression, anxiety, we're not going to just be like, you know what, pray about it. No. I believe there are physical ways that you can be helped. There's physical medicine that can help you in those things. But I'm saying our spiritual problem is sin. We are separated from God when Adam and, Adam and Eve fell. All of humanity fell with them. And at that point, we were separated from God. And that is a, that's an eternal problem. Any other problem you have in this world, if you break a leg, if you lose a loved one, it's all temporary. But sin and separation from God is eternal. And the only way to fight it is Jesus. And he gives us the answer. And the angels and demons are fighting and they're trying to hide Jesus from us. They're trying to get Jesus away from us. But no, we have the answer in Jesus. We have to understand that. We have to trust that. Anything that is against God is a spiritual warfare attack. Sin is a spiritual warfare attack. And it's influencing you down the wrong path. Because there's only one battle in this world. And that's the battle for people to be with Jesus, angels, or with the demons and the devil. And so number three... I already kind of said it, but our victory in our battle is found in Jesus Christ alone. He is our answer to our one and only true serious problem in this world that we live. This one will last forever. And so we need to be strong in the Lord. When you were saved, when some of you guys said yes to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you were sealed that day. You have and perm permanently have the indwelling presence of God and the fullness of his power of the Holy Spirit at your disposal at any moment. The Spirit of God lives inside of each and every one of you. There should be no fear about any other spirit coming against you when you give your life to Jesus. I want to read one more passage to you guys. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 20 say it like this. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him. So these disciples were sent out. They were sent to save people towards Christ. And there were spirits coming against them in this time. This was the days of Jesus. We're in the gospel here. And they were joyfully reported to him, Lord... Even the demons obey us when we use your name. Come on, isn't that crazy? Like angels were created before us. They're more powerful than us. How are they obeying human beings right now? Even the demons obey us when we use your name. That's why they obey them. When we use Jesus' name. Yes, he told them. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority over all the power. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. You guys are a disciple if you believe in Jesus. That means you're, you're learning underneath God. You're learning more about Jesus. That's what a disciple means. Look, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. That's, that's an imagery, but basically saying nothing can come against you. No spiritual being can come against you if you have Jesus in your heart. Nothing will injure you, but don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. My goodness, that's a good verse right there. Give it up for that one. It's simple, young people. It's simple. You choose what influences you. You have a choice. You have power in Jesus' name. Demons have no power over you if you choose Jesus. And also, they have limited power over you. If you haven't chose Jesus yet, you are not under the control of demons and angels completely yet. You have ability to choose the right side. And so that's why we're here. For whatever reason, there's a war in heaven that people don't agree with God. There's a war in humanity of people that don't agree with God, and you have to decide what way are you going to go. That's really our whole point of being here, and we have to help sway people to either side. Which way are you going to be influenced to? Error or truth? Your flesh or God's spirit? Why are you guys fighting the flesh so hard? Why are we fighting other people so hard? Isn't it exhausting? You see, when we see the real problem, we end up seeing the real solution. We have to see that there's a real battle happening and that the battle isn't a person, it isn't our principal, it isn't our teacher, it isn't the Democratic Party, it isn't the Republican Party, it isn't a president. No, there's a spiritual realm that is outside of us that is dictating the things in our world. And so, a lot of times, like, I just think of it like this. If you were going to start, in World War II, if you were going to stop Hitler and the, the German army, you'd be dumb to get mad at the one person in the United States that was like, you know, I don't know, maybe I kind of agree with Hitler. And, like, you start getting
getting mad at them and you take them out or maybe you like kill them. Like that's not the root of the problem. The root of the problem is Hitler. We need to go after Hitler and we need to end the leader of that. See, the real problem is the demons and the devil and we need to be praying with spiritual power of Jesus' name against those things. Because those are the ones that are ruining the people that are hateful and evil. Hateful and evil human beings start from angels that don't choose God. And we need to be praying against them. We gotta stop yelling at people in their face, physical humans, we gotta be praying for them and the spiritual influences that are negatively making them choose wrong decisions and not God. Here's my bottom line, talking about God. He's all about the smoke because really any threat in comparison is truly a laughable joke. Come on, I'm a rhymer, bust the rhymes. But it's true, you guys. Have no fear. Understand that the spiritual realm is here. Come on, I'm still rhyming. Understand it's here. But don't be obsessed about it, don't be fearful about it, but understand where you need to be attacking and where the battle's at. Attack the devil, attack his army. We don't believe in that stuff. We're not standing for it. We're standing with God today and tonight.